folks, welcome back again to the channel. So I thought I'd put, put a little post about five things that I'm not so crazy about about my Himalayan. I'm being really picky here. First thing. Okay, you have a guy whose uh, back is not great like mine, who might have problems. Um, getting onto a bike and the bike is put down at 800 millimeter seat level and it is 800 millimeter seat level there 800 millimeter but of course you've got the pillion seat which uh, makes a difference so when you get an under machine you got to remember that that's 800 mil but that's higher. I had a Triumph Bonneville, the T100. The seat is level. So if the seat on that is, I can't remember, 810, 820, something like that, but the seat is flat. So for old trackers like me, when you get none, you have to get over this piece as well. You see? So, you know, you're also throwing your leg this way. No, okay, I'm okay at the moment. Could be interesting in a few years. <laughs> of course, you can put the bike on a center stand, and you can stand up and get onto the bike, and then tip yourself forward, and the bike tips forward. The, uh, some people do it on the side stand. They get on like that leg on the side stand, and then throw the leg over. That's great if you have a strong side side stand, or you're not so fat like me. If I was um, a lot lighter, I would definitely do it that way. It's very easy. With the side stand down, the bike's already leaned over. Put your left foot on the, on the stand, throw your right foot on. That's all very good if you're happy with your stand. I'm not sure about the stand on this. And of course, again, my weight. I don't want to break my stand or bend the stand or anything. Anyway, that's... One little tiny thing, that goes for all bikes. Every bike you see, you see seat height, but seat height is the sitting height here. It doesn't include if you have um, a higher, or if you have something like, um, I don't know, uh, race bikes, you know, the old rice burners, where the seat comes up like this. Then you gotta, you see fellas, and also if you have a bags on the back, of course, with any bike it's the same, then you gotta do this. To get onto it, you know, and that's all very well, but not very well for the young guys. Okay, I'm not 90 yet, but I'm getting there after a few accidents. Um, so one little thing, the other thing, the fuel tank. On the fuel tank here, there's no protection, and it's not the Himalayan's fault; it's the rider. Um, I wear jackets with zips, of course, so your zip is here, you sit on the bike, your zip is on this, and your zip is scratching away. I've only been riding the bike now, um, maybe three weeks, four weeks, since the weather got good, and already the tank was scratched up very quickly. Of course, this matte, this sort of vinyl matte paint scratches up so easily. So what I've done was I got a bit of uh, tape and put it there. I'll show you that in a few minutes. I'm not going to complain about the power. I know what the power is. I'm happy with the power. I rode bikes for years with less power, so for me, no problem. The front brake, it's okay. I don't have a problem with it. Um, expect the unexpected, and um, it's grand. Actually, the front brake is probably nearly better in some situations off-road because it comes down slow. It doesn't just jam on. It doesn't just come on very suddenly, you know? So I'm not going to complain about that. Um, what else could I possibly have to, to have a moan about? I hate all modern bikes uh, that have this. Um, I hate all modern bikes that have this lights that come on as soon as you turn the ignition on. Um, obviously, health and safety because people forget to turn their lights on. But when you, when you fire the bike up, you have all your lights on. When you turn it on, you have all your lights on, draining your battery power. 
And um, actually, back in the day when I worked in a bike shop in, in Dublin, in Ireland, we had uh, a lot of lads used to come in and get us to fit toggle switches onto the headlight, and you could toggle the toggle the headlight off. I think a lot of the Suzuki Bandits came in. They had this um, headlight that was on as soon as you turned ignition on. I could be wrong. But I seem to remember it was with uh, the more modern sport bikes that that happened and the lads used to get us to fit toggle switches so that they would be easier to do, you know. So that's one of the little modifications I made with, 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 with the tank with that. And, uh, yeah. Of course I have my list, but being an old female guy, I, I, uh, bear with me and I get my list out. Ah, the seat, the seat, that's, that's something else I need to talk to you about. The, uh, that is one of the things that really drives me crazy. And for the seat, I'm going to come over, I'm going to get the camera, and I'm going to bring you on a journey with me. Bear with me while I just do this. I hope you can hear me, I'm not talking too loud today. I'm a... Uh, in a public area and with me being an introvert I don't like shouting too loud okay I'll just take this off the tripod now so I'll show you what I've done with the tank you can see what I've done with the tank so with the petrol tank I just got a piece of uh, vinyl and just put it here the tank was scratching up here quite easily which was a uh, I wasn't happy with I have a piece of vinyl that I used. Um, just got it in the local printing place. And uh, I just got a sheet of this vinyl, which is not glass, it's it's, it's a sort of a matte color. Just like wrap, it's, it's like similar to wrap. And I just cut it and just fit it. And uh, that stops my zip from ruining the tank. Now the seat, that is one thing I just can't get it over. I'll try and get the, the light a bit better. Why did they use this? It's not leather. It's some sort of a spongy rubbish. It's terrible. It marks up very easy. You can see all the marks. It's definitely, I don't know what it is. Leatherette or something. That's one thing I would 100% change if I, if I could afford to change it. I'd definitely get a leather seat. Proper old style leather or imitation leather that's one of the things i would definitely do no, no, no. i'll get this list i dropped um oh yeah the other thing as i said i'm being ultra nitpicky i'm very happy with the bike when you're standing up on the bike these panels they seem to come out quite far they're your legs your legs are you know, your ankles here, your legs seem, they seem to be just a little bit too far, you know. Um, but that's it, I have so little to complain about because everything is, is so perfect. Of course we have somebody cutting in the forest, cutting wood, which is sort of normal behaviour around here. I'll just show you where I am. I'm near the town of Balby in Latvia. We're about... Uh, how far are we? We're about 35 kilometers from the Russian border, something like that. And we're in the Latgal area of, of uh, Latvia, which is countryside. I remember I had a Latvian friend in Ireland and I told him I was moving to Latvia. And he asked me uh, where in Latvia. And I said to him, Latgal. And he said, ah, oh, jungle, which is the jungle. So <laughs> I suppose you could call us where hillbillies were the jungle people. But um, I'll just show you where we are, very, very lovely part of, of Latvia. So, we go down here and show you, this is the, the local lake. There's some lads working on this, coming down this forestry here. So, one thing you hear almost every day is, is chainsaws, a lot of chainsaws. <laughs> so, I don't know, nobody can complain about my bike exhaust because, um, place is full of chainsaws going all day long. My bike is also not that loud. It's deep and throaty and it's not it's not loud. This the local lake. Um, I live just over there. 
about 500 meters from the lakeside and uh, where I live I'm beside the lake there's a lovely little area for going and sitting and going for a swim if you want to and uh, it's a brown water lake it's clean but it's it's a uh, it's a brown water and uh, yeah that's where we are lovely, lovely part of Latvia So that was it, and it's, it's just sorry about the, the camera walk. As I said, I've no GoPro. I'm just messing about with my normal camera. So there ain't no stabilizer on this, so you're probably jumping around like a crazy person on the screen. Yeah. But there you go, that's just uh, the only things I can think of. And when it comes down to it, the only thing that I would definitely change would be the seat. Definitely the seat would be something I would have to change eventually. Maybe. I might get a local person, I might find somebody who can cover it in leather. And, uh, and um, th that's one thing just to say to people. People say, oh, it's 800mm low height, and it's great for an off road bike, it is, for an adventure bike, for an ADV bike, it's great, 800mm. But for throwing your leg over, as somebody who's not Mr. Young Guy, um, don't forget, you've got to clear this, and of course, whatever's in the back. But that's with all bikes. But, you know. Something to keep in mind, I mean another bike that was on my list of bikes to maybe get was the um, the R 1150R or the R 850R BMW models, um, they have a very low seat height, 780 I think, up to 810, they're adjustable seat heights and um, that was something on my list of uh, bikes to get maybe in the future and they're, they're fairly low seat height again so I know I'm going all about sea height, but with my little 20, 28, 29 inch legs, <laughs> it's, it's, it's good to have a bike you can easily show you. And, and my, my hips are getting worse as the year goes on after that uh, crash with my back many, many years ago. As I get older, my hips get worse and worse. So um, it's just something to keep in mind. What a lovely bike. Look at that. I'm realistically, I'm only worried about the seat because it's not proper leather and I think eventually I'll catch it with my boot and I'll rip it and then I'll be really, really upset, you know. The side panels, yeah, you get used to them sticking into your leg. I think other people have said that. And um, the little scratch in the tank, well, that's my own fault, you know. But I mean, everyone has zips. If you have zips in your jacket, that's where you see a lot of these uh, bikes with, with the, the, the stickers. You see a lot of bikes with these stickers on the... Um, on the petrol tank. It's, it, it helps protect from your, your zipper on your jacket. So, okay folks, thanks for watching and uh, anybody for subscribing. Uh, if you want to check out my photographs, if you go on to my Facebook page, same name, Moto Latvia, that's my Facebook page. And I have my, my photos there. Um, if you send me a friend request and I see you have some autobike content, on your page, I will accept you. If I see you don't have any motorbike contact uh, co content, I won't accept you because of, of too many scammers now. I've accepted people before and after a week to be advertising that they do loans and all this rubbish that so drives me crazy. And and you get the, the religious lunatics as well. So um, <laughs> so there you go. That's my Facebook page. Give that a check out, and you'll see what I what my my first hobby is, which is photography. This year, the riding season here in Latvia starts the 29th of April. So hopefully I'll be going on a lot of runs, uh, possibly with my local club. and doing a lot of photographs. And, uh, okay, folks, that's great. Thanks for watching.